Hello everyone, I'm Nazarat Fatima. Welcome to Live Law. The abrogation of Article 370 led to a controversial debate in the Supreme Court where many petitions were filed challenging the dilution of Article 370, which earlier gave special status to the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. After the petitioners concluded their arguments, the center commenced their arguments, which were opened by the Attorney General, R. Venkat Ramani, before a bench comprising CJI Divide Chandrachur, Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul, Sanjeev Khanna, B.R. Gawai and Surya Khan. To remind the viewers, we have made an effort to compile all the arguments in a video series where we have tried to highlight the major arguments made by the petitioners. The links of the videos are given in the description box. Do check them out to understand the stance of the petitioners. Now let's discuss the arguments made by the Attorney General, Mr. Venkat Ramani. He began arguing and opened his argument stating that a limb can be amputated to save a life, but life is never given to save a limb. He emphasized the government's approach of combining understanding, objectivity and neutrality while addressing this issue. In this regard, he said, and I quote, we have tried to bring our own understanding of this emotion, passion riddled issue. We have kept in mind the objectivity and neutrality required. He remarked the words of Abraham Lincoln to illustrate the point. He said, and I quote, Abraham Lincoln talked about balancing, losing the nation and preserving the constitution. He said that by general law, life and limb must be protected. But a limb can be amputated to save a life, whereas a life is never given to save a limb. Meanwhile, responding to this submission, the Chief Justice of India emphasized and underlined the importance of lawful approaches in achieving desired outcomes. He questioned the principle of ends justifying means and posed a question. He asked, and I quote, we cannot postulate a situation where the ends justify the means also, right? Means should also be consistent with the ends. In response to which both the Attorney General and the Solicitor General maintained their stance that the methods and procedures employed in the abrogation of Article 370 were conducted within the boundaries of the Constitution. The Attorney General asserted that no deviation has taken place with regard to this presidential proclamation and to say that a fraud has been committed on the Constitution is incorrect. The Attorney General further argued that on the combined reading of Instrument of Accession and the proclamation of the Maharaja of JNK, followed by the adoption of 370, full sovereignty of JNK was surrendered to the Indian Dominion. He added that Article 370 was designed to aid the constitutional integration process on the same line as it happened with the other states, and that the continued exercise of Article 370 over a period of time could not be seen as a distortion of its original purpose. He asserted that border states were special territories and their reorganization requires distinct consideration. Thus, the court would rely upon the parliament in the choices of actions relating to such states. The Solicitor General, Mr. Tushar Mehta, said that psychological duality was resolved by the abrogation of Article 370. He asserted, and I quote, after going through the facts, it will be clear that a large number of fundamental rights and other rights will now be conferred upon the residents of JNK and they would be fully at par with the rest of their brothers and sisters of this country. Tracing the history of Jammu and Kashmir's accession, the Solicitor General asserted that the moment the accession was complete, JNK's sovereignty was lost and it was blended with the larger sovereignty of India. The other point that the Solicitor General made was that JNK was not the only princely state with special reservations in the instrument of accession. Mr. Mehta opposed the notion that JNK held a special position within British India due to its constitution in 1939, which continued later on. He stated, and I quote, there were 62 states which had their own constitutions. The argument that JNK had a special status since the beginning, which continued till date, is factually wrong. He also emphasized that several states were involved in constitution-making processes alongside signing the instrument of accession, signaling their intention to integrate into the larger framework of India while maintaining certain autonomous features. However, he emphasized that ultimately, once the constitution of India was made, every state's sovereignty got subsumed within the Indian dominion and the only sovereign that remained was we, the people of India. Later, he said that the execution of merger agreement is not necessary to become part of India. While referring to the arguments raised by the Council for Petitioners that a merger agreement was necessary for complete integration with the Union of India, Mr. Mehta argued that the execution of a merger agreement 
was not necessary to become a part of the Indian nation. He argued that there were many princely states which did not sign the merger agreement and yet became a part of India solely on the basis of the instrument of accession they signed the moment the Indian constitution came into force. Now at this juncture, the CJI requested the Solicitor General to provide a list of all princely states which did not sign a merger agreement with India and yet became a part of the Indian Dominion and Mr. Mehta agreed to the same. Another argument made by Mr. Mehta was that JNK was being discriminated against before the abrogation. He highlighted that there existed discrimination against the people of JNK as the Indian constitution was not fully applied to the state before the abrogation of Article 370 in 2019. He said, and I quote, Till 1976, Article 21 was applicable with a truncated way. Article 19, there was a sub-article added as it was applied to JNK that reasonable restrictions would be those which would be prescribed by the legislature, meaning thereby that the persons against whom citizens invoke Article 19 would decide what would be the reasonable restrictions. In his arguments, Mr. Mehta also highlighted that the practical consequence of the discrimination was that two constitutional organs, the state government and the president in consultation with each other, could amend any part of the constitution the way they wanted to and apply it to JNK. Finally, he argued that internal sovereignty should not be confused with autonomy. Continuing with this argument, Mr. Mehta asserted that the petitioners were confusing internal sovereignty with autonomy. He stated that autonomy lied with all the states as they were federal units of the Union of India. To this, the CJI remarked, and I quote, Autonomy is actually there with every institution. We have the autonomous authority to decide constitutional issues. So we cannot say that internal sovereignty rests with us. We are an independent autonomous institution under the constitution. They are saying that we gave up external sovereignty, no doubt. They say that course of events and the adoption of 370 would indicate that while there was a giving up of external sovereignty, internal sovereignty exercised by the then Maharaja, that was not ceded to India. This is accepting supremacy of our constitution and surrendering the sovereignty to the constitution where the sovereign is we, the people of India. The Solicitor General also argued that according to him, the JNK Constituent Assembly was nothing more than a legislature. On this submission, the CJI said, eventually when you argue that this is not a Constituent Assembly but a Legislative Assembly in its original form, you'll have to answer how this squares up to Clause 2 of Article 370, which specifically says Constituent Assembly was formed for purpose of framing the Constitution of JNK. Because there is a textual answer which may militate against your line of approach. That's all that happened in the matter till now. For a detailed version of the arguments, visit the article. The link is given in the description box. The arguments will resume on Monday, that is 28th of August 2023. We hope you like our content. If you do, please like and share our videos. Also, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications. Thank you for watching.